Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at making, not only making our own, but adding a parameter, adding a custom parameter to material tags. So material tags, we, we need to actually tag what a material is and have that show up in our schedule, of course, but we need to tag in an elevation. Like, where is the thing? <laughs> so before we get into it, if you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It helps me out a lot and tells me that you might have actually learned something or like the video maybe. So here we are. I mean, just a basic project. I don't have a material tag loaded into my project, nothing like that. So let's go ahead and do that because I do want to actually tag what this wall material might be. And then from there, we can end up adding a custom parameter to it to maybe give you know, the contractor more information to go off of as to not only what that material is, but you know, maybe some more information about it, something specific, maybe something that you want done with that. Okay, here we go. So material tag, you can find that in the annotation tab and then material tag. When I click this, I don't have one loaded. So yeah, let's load it in. So we can find those tags and really all tags in the annotations. And then we can see that we have all of our different tags here, just kind of a mess of them. But what I really care about is architectural because you know that's what we're doing here, architectural. And then here is our tags and there, there it is, a nice convenient material tag. So I'll click open. So here we are, and we're just, you know, we're tagging away. So let's go ahead and tag this wall. And of course, we can do it like that. And there we go. So there's no information about this wall because I have no material applied to this wall. So what I want to do is actually click on the wall, and we'll go in. Let's just add a material. Let's go ahead and let's call this brick. And so th there it is. It's called brick. But with this brick, if we look at the actual material, my guess is that there's no information because, sure enough, I get a question mark. And so what is this question mark referring to? Well, it's not only referring to you know, that in particular, but I, I have all these different custom parameters. And because I have no information filled out at all, I don't get any information. So let's go ahead and fill this out. And you know, for the heck of it, let's just call this BK1. You know, It's brick one. So BK1, there we go. That's what it is. And so where is this coming from? Well, we can find that, obviously, within the material. So I'm going to go to Manage, and then Materials, and I can see... On my exterior brick, if I go to my identity tab, I can see, well, that happened to be the description. <laughs> you know, it, that's fine. It, I don't really care. It seems like that would, yeah, that's good enough, I guess. But maybe you want it to be something else. I mean, you could, we could look at all of our different custom parameters and because I have a bunch made. Maybe you want this to be the actual material size or something like that. Maybe you want this to be the color. I don't know. But we can start to add more of this information into this particular tag and that's really nice to be able to do a lot of times what i've seen is that this value that's used for the tag is actually the mark value because it turns out that is what i would end up using for this actual material that would be bk1 and so i might want that to because that's reflected on my finished schedule i would want that to be the same and it kind of makes sense of course now i can always keep it as the description but maybe i don't want to so this is where things start to get custom because maybe we want this to look a little different. Maybe we want this to function a little different. So let's go ahead and edit the family. And at this point, I have my material description. And obviously, this is pulling from the material description, not necessarily because it's called material description here, but because of what this is doing and what it actually is. This is actually a label. So you can see I can hit edit label. And here we can see what's going on. This makes a lot more sense. So I've got description here and description. You know, there's my actual description. And this is actually associated to the parameter description in the materials. Like it, it's all a system parameter. It's built in and that's how it's working. And so maybe at this point, what I want to do is trade out this description for the mark. So I can just simply pull this value over and then pull mark over. And what I have is mark. So like this is actually pulling from the mark field in my material. Perfect. That's nice. So that's cool. If I, you know, it obviously changed the mark, but let's edit this again. And like I said before, maybe we want to add a custom parameter, something else that's uh, not necessarily a basic description or a comment. Maybe it's something specific to elevation. So I'm going to call it something like elevation notes or something like that because I want it to be, I want it, I want the information to the contractor to, to be this is the material because it's pulling the mark value, in this case, BK1 or whatever it might be on the finish schedule, and then a comma or something. And then a description that's specifically for elevations, or maybe it's specifically for floors, or wherever you might be calling this out. In this case, we're looking at elevation, so let's call that elevation notes. So I have add parameter here. That's all I can do. So let's add parameter. 
Now, immediately, I can't add a parameter itself, but the project parameter that is, I can only add shared parameters. Now, I have not covered shared parameters. I have not created a video on that yet, but I will very soon. So my guess is that if you're not working with a shared parameter file or anything like that, then you'll see this screen. And so this is assuming you're starting with no shared parameter file whatsoever. So I'm going to hit select. And of course, I, I have had one in the past, but this is going through the same process of, as if I didn't. So do I want to choose a new file? Well, yeah, of course I do. So at this point, you'll have nothing that you can choose from here except browse as in find this particular file. It's going to be a text file or create one. So let's just create one for the heck of it. So I'm going to call this share.txt. You know, it's a text file. And I want to put this in my project folder. You can really put it anywhere, but that would what I recommend just so that things are organized and make sense. So at this point, I have one option, and that is create a, a new group. So let's create a new group. Now, this tends to be, you can obviously name this anything and group them however, but it tends to be, you know, the type of parameter, what is it used for? And really, this is going to be for material. So I have all my material parameters might show up here in this group. That just makes sense. And so at this point, I've made a group, and you can see here I've got my materials group. And now I have the option here to create a parameter. So okay, cool. That's That means this parameter is then going to fall within this group. Very cool. And so we are actually finally somewhere that we're familiar with. This is similar to all other project parameters. And so what are we going to call this? Well, let's call this, again, elevation notes, because this is just going to be notes on the elevation. Uh, discipline doesn't matter so much. We don't really care about that. But the type of parameter is going to be text, because that's I'm just going to fill in text. That's really all it is. Edit the tooltip if you want, but press OK. So now what we have here is we've got the file that this shared parameter is actually living within. We've got the group that the parameter it's living within, and then there's the actual parameter that we just made. Of course, we can move this and, you know, I'll cover that in a different shared parameters video, but there we go. So I'll click OK, and we can see now we're choosing the actual parameter. And so it's, again, in the same group. I'll press OK again. There we go. And we can see, actually, that data is filled out here in the parameter data right there, We like we did already fill it out. Cool. So I've properly selected it. So I'll click OK, and then, boom, there it is. My elevation notes are actually available like that parameter is available to use and so i'll then just drag it in and so maybe what we want to do is then just have a break a line break so we've got our mark value and then maybe i want to put a comma and then i'll line break and then my elevation notes, whatever they might be so i'll click okay there we go very cool and so maybe i want this to be you know left justified well that's simple enough i can come over here and left justify this right here I like the way that looks a lot better. So let's go ahead and load this into the project and see what we see. Oh, we'll right it here. So there we go. So let's let's make sure this shows up a little bit better over here. Moot, drag this over. So there we go. So what we see here is only the data that we've filled out. And in this case, it's the BK1, the mark value. And so I can always come in here and it's nice because there we go. I have my new elevation notes parameter right there. Cool. I'll hit okay. And so let's actually go and see the actual parameter. I'll see that in my material. It's nice because all of this will be populated within the material. So there's my material. I'll come down to my custom parameters. And there we go. Elevation notes. Really nice. And so maybe, you know, again, this is, it could be a description. It could be something specific about the color. It could be something that you want to show and say specifically in the elevation. Now, I don't have anything specific that I'm going to say other than, you know, maybe it's a running bond. And maybe it's not a running bond in other places. So I, that's it's kind of up to you. So really, obviously, it's text. You can change it and make it whatever you want. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to call it running bond. I'll click OK here. Click OK there. But then we see nothing. We don't see our new information that, like running bond. We don't see that at all. And if we can see why, if I actually go into the label here, I can see, well, elevation notes is grayed out. So like, what the heck? So this is telling me that it's not a project parameter within my project. So I actually have to make that within my project. It exists, and so it's in the file, in the Revit file, in my project, and it's being referenced from the shared parameter file, but I haven't actually made that parameter within my project itself. So let's go ahead and add that. And you'll see, of course, it's a project parameter, but what we need to do is actually add a shared parameter. So like I need to physically bring it into the project. It's being referenced again, but not brought in. So I can click shared parameter. And then 
I have nothing else that I can select here except obviously the select button. Cool. And then there it is. Look at this. You know, if you have it all the, if you have different shared parameters within different groups, they'd show up there. And then you could select different parameters that you have within that group. But in this case, I have only one elevation notes. I'll click. Okay. All my information is filled out. And all we have left to do is assign that a particular type. So in this case, I want this category or this shared parameter to be associated to the materials category. That just, that makes sense. That's what we're trying to do here. So I will now click okay. And once again, click okay. And sure enough, we can see that, look, this is now no longer grayed out. Okay, cool. So let's go back to my material, go to manage in the materials. And of course, there we can see our elevation notes. That there it is. And so now let's see what happens. So now I'll type in running bond or whatever you want to do because it's just text. I will click OK. And then OK again. And then there we go. Look at that. That is cool. So this is the full information of my label. And it's, again, pulling from information that is directly within the material itself. So very cool stuff. And of course, if I want to edit it here, I can now edit those parameters right here. Really nice. So yeah, that's kind of it. We've, we, what we, what did we look at? Well, we looked at, of course, bringing in a material tag, not a big deal, but changing the label to a different built in material parameter that we have. Maybe that's mark. Maybe it's a comment or description, something like that. I wanted to change it to the mark value. And then we ended up adding our own shared parameter so we can add new notes. And we made that on a new line, brought that into the project and associate it to the materials category. And we're good to go. Like we can now, have different materials and we can use this anywhere else and it'll pull different materials, do the same thing. And it's all associated to those materials and pulling the text from those specific material parameters. Great stuff. So leave any questions that you have down in the comment section below. I will look to create a shared parameters video in the very near future because I know that's a very hot topic. A lot of people have asked for that and I know it's definitely on my radar and it's coming out soon. So stick around for that. But really, that will do it. If you happen to learn something, which I sure hope you did, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out, and I appreciate it so much. So again, that'll do it. Have a wonderful day. See you in the next video, and thanks for watching.